Okay, hey. So I am currently on my way to meet up with Rachel, one of my friends, um, because we're going camping this weekend. Um, and neither of us are Course 12, but this is the Earth Atmospheric and Planetary Sciences fall field trip, which should be really fun. Um, we get to learn about geology and stuff, which is cool. And I'm gonna try and vlog. We'll see how it goes. We're warmed up looking at rocks, but there's a lot to see here. So the younger rocks have brought down to the west, the older rocks are here uh, on this side. And if you go and look at it, you'll see that it's not a very sharp plane. It's a zone of broken up rock. We call it a fault dredger, a zone of cataclysis. There's a lot of brittle deformation. There's even ductile deformation going on. For it to be ductile, we have to be at elevated temperature pressure, usually with water present, so you see some of them deformed. So these are Ordovician rocks, the so-called um, Monson gneiss. They're igneous rocks. There's some sedimentary rocks mixed in with them, but largely igneous rocks. If you start to look at it, you'll see their quartz and feldspar. And then I accidentally like pulled the whole rock down. I hope I got your face. I'm filming. I don't live in that. That's nothing because they're covered with lichen. But one thing you'll notice is you see a lot of streakiness to it. It's sort of a lineated rock. So when you think about deforming rocks, <coughs> imagine this rock. I'll tell you what this rock probably was before it was deformed. It was probably a conglomerate with a whole bunch of sort of spherical pebbles of quartz in it. You've probably all seen things like this, conglomerate with round cobbles. It then got deformed and metamorphosed deep in the crust and stretched out. So each one of these white strips here is a round piece of quartz that was flattened and drawn out. And geologists like rocks like this, A, because it's a very distinctive lithology and you can use it as a marker when you're mapping, but it also allows you to quantify the amount of deformation by looking at how much it has been linear in the direction of transport. This rock has garnet and starlight in it, and then the, the shiny stuff is muscovite mica. And so this is what we would call star, garnet starlight. That's our What you see here are the deposits in the rift valley. And if you read about them in the book, you see that they are cyclically deposited. And you have to sort of crawl over this on your hands and knees to pick it up. The big cycles you can see vary between sandstones and these mudstones. And so if you walk up and down the bedding plane, so it's dipping like this, going up section this way, it's been rotated, you'll see sandstones and fine, fine mudstones and back in the sand. And they realized that this signal of alternating bedding and depositional environments is related to astronomical forces. And you could actually tell time by counting cycles at the, really they could do it at the plus or minus a few thousand year level. And these rocks are 200 million years old. But you have to be able to tell. So we dated lava flows, basaltic lava flows like the one over there, interlayered with the 
and tested it, and lo and behold, you got exactly the same duration of the cyclicity as they did from the counter. We in an absolute time that they gave it. So it is a very powerful technique if you're sure you have the astronomical. So we just went looking for fish fossils, which was really cool. They were um, sandstone, sandstone and mudstone deposits. Um, and we just tried to, because the fish get squished between the layers of sedimentary rocks, and squished between layers, so we just tried to shear them off. Um, no one found anything, but it's still really fun to see where they come from and that we actually were in a riverbed deposit that existed X thousand million years ago. Yeah, that's cool.